Hey guys, let's do some chemistry. Ooh, okay. Bad chapter title again, chemical mixture problems. This should be puzzles. Just to make them less intimidating. But this is another one of those things, if you take any, any kind of a homeschool, like a chemistry class, um, if you're actually sitting there in the co-op, half the kids are like just sitting there like, you know, about to fall apart because of the math, um, and you'll know how to do it. These are really neat. I mean, these are really sensible and, uh, Anyway, they're just they're, they're they're fun to kind of solve once you get the method down. And if you don't have the method down the first time, don't worry about it. Copy. I've I've made a real simple, nice and clear method that you'll want to again, man. Make sure you're doing this with your your notebook. Fifty two right there. Boom, boom, boom. You know, like that, so you can look at these nice simple problems. There's only two steps to this one. Okay. Let's look. A druggist has one solution. 10% iodine, another that's 50% iodine. How much of each should he use to get 100 milliliters of a mixture that's 20% iodine? Now, you know, look, looking at this at first, golly, oh, the word druggist, oh, druggies? Oh, they're, oh, they're, oh, they're you know, my mother doesn't want to do these kind of problems. Anyway, it's a legal druggist. Anyhow, you got iodine, you got 10%, you got mixtures, you got, you know, weird things like milliliters, one of those, you know, I think, I think that those, anyway, that the animals have a hundred legs, I think some, anyway, I forget, but um, there is a method to do these, and uh, once you know it, bam, they are easy. So let's take a look at the method, copy this down, definitely get this down. All right, here are the steps. Number one, write an equation in this form, x plus y equals amount. So you can pause it if you want to. Let me explain that. In other words, you're mixing, let's just think about the problem itself. They're, they're saying a druggist has this solution, here it is. He has another solution, here it is, okay? He's mixing them together to get 100 milliliters. Well, that's your first equation, right? He's throw. if somebody told you and said, um, two guys uh, got on a scale, uh, two, two, two little boys got on a scale, and the scale read 100 pounds, what would your equation be? And you would write an equation that would be, oh, uh, x plus y equals 100. You don't know if they're both 50, that one could be 90, one could be a newborn, I don't know, 10, whatever. Okay, so, but both of them together equal 100 pounds, right? Okay, well, the second equation is very similar to this. Now, let's look at the second part. In other words, we've got one equation that says you throw some clump together, you throw some more clump together, you get 100 milliliters, we'll call it. We don't, and you don't have to worry about the word milliliters or anything like that in the solution. You just put 100 in the, in the, in the uh, problem. Okay, then let's talk about this. Here's 10% clump you're doing of something. And okay, here's 50% clump of something. And you're getting 100 of, you know, all together of 100, you know, of something, 20%. Well, how would you write that? Well, you would go, Let's see, 10% 0.1 times, let's see, how much am I adding in there? I don't know, so we'll call it x, okay? The second part is, oh, 50%, uh, 0.5, and how much am I adding to this stuff? Uh, I don't know, I'll call it y. Okay, all right, good. And I, eat, and I get, let's see, 100 milliliters, and oh, it's 20%, so 100 times 0.2, right? And that's, your, that's the way you do it. So this is the second step. Write an equation in this form, Percent times x plus percent times y equals percent times amount. You can pause it. Okay, well, let's do it. Let's take a look. I've already kind of sneaked a little thing here. Okay, so let's do the first equation. The first is you got an amount. We don't know what it is. 10%. I don't know what it is. I'm added to another, I'm pouring some more, don't know how much it is, but I know the total is equal to 100, right? That's equation one, okay? And you know, in algebra, if you have two unknowns, you've got to have two equations to solve it, right? The second equation, clump, here's 10% you're pouring in of some amount, I don't know what it is, but I know it's 10%, there it is, 0.1. I'm adding it to 50%, ah, 0.5, the amount, I don't know. Okay, but I know, real quickly, I know that the amount is still 100, but the, the, you know, the percent iodine is not 0.1 or 0.5 anymore, it's 0.2. Okay, so I'm still going to do, do the same amount. Boom, there you go. That's it. That's your method.
So at this point, you can piddle around with a little bit of arithmetic, but you can solve these. You can you know, do substitution if you want, you can do elimination, whatever, whatever is easy as can be. What I would do first is to go 0.2 times 100, well, immediately I know that's 20, right? That's pretty simple. What I would do is I'd write this first equation and go, ugh, I don't want these decimals. I'm moving everything over once. Bam, bam, and then there we go. Okay, so here's my first equation. X plus 5Y equals uh, 200, right? Okay, 200. Then the first equation, X plus Y equals 100, okay? So right there, I would say probably elimination, subtract, 4y minus y is 4, I mean, excuse me, 5y minus y is 4y, that's 100, and so y is equal to 25. Now, we don't have to do anything else other than that, other than just do the subtraction. If you've got 25, you know, milliliters of something, and there's 100 total, well, obviously, the x has to be 100 minus 25, 75. And by the way, this is an extra, you can skip this part if you want to, but it is helpful to look at this and go, did I get this right? Here's what you can do. If you have 100 milliliters of some, in other words, here's your you know, concoction. Let's say it, I don't know, turns you into a wolf. Okay, here it is. Well, 20% of that is iodine, right? So it's 100 total, right? So obviously this is 20 milliliters of iodine, right? That's what your total is going to be. Well, let's look. If you have 10% iodine, the X, okay, it's 10% iodine. And you're saying 10% of that 75 is iodine? Well, 10% of 75 is 7.5, right? That's the iodine content. Let's go over here. This 25% has 50%. What's 50% iodine of 25 milliliters? Well, fit half of 25 is 12.5, right? You add those together, five plus five, 10, one, seven, and boom. And, and 20, that is proof right there that we are right, because we've done it right. You don't have to do that every time, but I, I would do something like um, making sure it's sensible. In other words, you're, you're mashing in there some stuff that's 10% iodine, and you're also doing some 50%, and you're ending up with only 20%. Now, 20 is way higher, excuse me, 20 is closer to 10 than it is to 50, so whatever that 10% is thing, you better be adding more of that 10% in there than the 50. Okay, so, and of course it does check out on our problem. All right, let's try another one. And this is the last one we do for this, uh, for this lesson. Then we'll go to the practice problem. Um, here's the chemist again. He's got a solution. 10% salt. The other one's 2% salt. Okay, that good? Okay, how much of each should he use to make 1,400 of 6% salt. Let's think about that for a second. He's got 10% salt pouring it, then 2% salt pouring that. He's got 1,400 mill, uh, milliliters at 6% salt. Now, I want you to take a look at this. Look at 10% and look at 2% and look at then look at 6%. Where is 6% as a, as a uh, you know, you know, as far as 10% and 2% go? Where is it? It's right in the middle, right? In other words, here's your 2 percent. Here's your 10 percent. Six is exactly in the middle. It's four away from this and it's four away from 10, right? So logically, we are going to have to, we have 1,400 total here. Logically, if we have exactly between 10 percent and 2 percent, we're going to have to actually have exactly the same amount of each. So our answer should be 700 of each, right? Let's just check it, okay? We'll, we'll just do it. Okay, so you tell me, pause it for a second, Come up with the first equation. You tell me the first equation. Go back, look at your notes. Pause it. Come up with the first equation. Okay. Your first equation should be, I'm adding something to something else, and I'm going to get 1,400 total. Okay. All right. Pause it again in a second. Now, go ahead and do your second equation based on the one we just did a minute ago. Go ahead and pause it and do it. Okay, your second equation should be this. I've got 10% of something, and I have 2% of something else. Make sure you don't put 0.2, that's 20%, all right? 0.2 is 0.02, all right? The last thing you should write 
is not 0.6. Make sure it's not 0.6. It's 0 0.06, and you multiply that by 1,400. All right? Now, what you can do if you want to, you can just go ahead and do, and here's an old math trick for you. If you're, if you're messing around with multiplying decimals and zeros, just pull it over twice to get rid of your decimal. That's six. Pull this over twice to get to, to even things out so that your answer is six times 14. And, of course, at this point, you can, you know, just to save yourself some you know, some time. You can use a calculator if you want to. Anyway, that is 84. Okay. This is the deal. Now, again, you don't want to be messing with fractions and decimals at this point. Let's make these all nice and good. You've got to go twice over here, which means you have to go twice over here as well, which gives you a 10. Twice over here gives you 8,400. Okay. So you, what you're going to have to do is you got the first equation. Let's copy that again. X plus Y. I'm giving some space here. Is 1,400. The second equation is 10x plus 2y equals 8,400. And again, I would probably, I mean, you know, I, this looks like you could just multiply the top by 2, just do some elimination, or by 10, whatever. I mean, it doesn't matter. You know what? Let's just do 10. 10x, 10y, and then 10 times that's 14,000, right? Then we subtract. So I got an 8y. I got 14,000 minus 5,600, okay. Obviously, you can do the arithmetic at this point. 8 into 56 is 7, so we know the answer is 700. And, of course, logically, if 700 is y, then 700 has to be x as well. We've already done the, uh, the it passes the smell test because, of course, we said at the beginning that 6 is right in the middle of 2% and 10%, so there you go, okay. Okay, pause it. Try the uh, practice problem, and we'll come together in just a minute. Okay, Th they give you more information than you need on this. You don't need to know that this is 75% water. If you're the type that this, this bothers you, and if mom says it's okay in your book, um, just cross out this 75% water. We don't need that, okay? We got 25% salt, 5% salt, how much for 50? Uh-oh. Do you realize what's happened here again? Look at this. How does this remind you of the last problem we did? Okay, we're adding 25% of something, right? And then we're adding 5% of something, and we want to get something that's 15, which is exactly in the middle of 5 and 25, right? So if we have 1,600, you know, milliliters of something, obviously we're going to have, if it's right in the middle, 800 and 800, right? That's what we should be getting. Okay, first... Uh, is we're going, I'm adding something to something and getting 1,600. There's my first one. The second one, I got 5% salt and I got 25% salt and I'm going to have 15, that's times the 1,600. Okay. All right. Well, I don't like this decimal de depth. 15% of 1,600 is 240. I'm going to mash this over twice, over twice, and then good gravy, that's two zeros. Okay, so here's our new equation. I got x plus y equals 1600, and I got 5x plus 25y equals 24,000. Good gravy. Okay, so let's just go ahead and multiply by 5 just to do the elimination. 5x 5y, 1,600 times 5 is 8,000, so we'll just uh, call that 8,000. All right, going to subtract, gone, 5 minus 25 is negative 20, 8,000 minus 24,000 is negative 16,000, and a negative divided by a negative, of course, uh, we can chop the zeros off here if you want to, or, you know, so that's going to be y is equal to 800, of course. And we know that's a sensible answer because we figured this is right in the middle. It's got to be equal of 1,600, 800. Logically, it has to be, x has to be 800 as well. So, yeah. okay. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.